Okay, let's talk about the hand muscles now. In this uh, tutorial, we're going to talk about the uh, thenar, hypothenar muscles, and the adductor pollicis, the lumbricals, and the neuroceous muscles, their actions and their innervation. And we'll, throughout this, we'll talk about Guillain's canal. Okay, hand and the hand muscles. I've called this is called the intrinsic hand muscles because these are muscles that are originate and insert in the hand. There's a lot of tendons that go to the hand, like FDP, FDS, FPL, EDC, but these muscles originate in the forearm or even in the arm in some cases, and then their long tendons go into the hand. So they have great power, not a lot of dexterity. Our intrinsic hand muscles, the following list, don't have as much power. In fact, they're fatigued easier but they have a lot of dexterity, which is also why, if you remember in the homunculus, so much, so much uh, uh, somatotopic um, space has been or uh, dedicated to hand muscles in the pre-mortar, uh, pre-central uh, gyrus. All right, let's start with the thenar muscles. Thenar muscles are muscles that act on the thumb, and there's three of them, abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, and opponens pollicis. And there they are for the abbreviations AFO on the thumb muscles. And whether you can identify those three individual muscles on a picture or a cadaver it doesn't matter to me. The main thing is to recognize the actions. We have an abductor of the thumb, a flexor of the thumb, and an opposer of the thumb. Opposition or opponent's pulses think thumb touching pinky. And so fine dexterity of the thumb, like uh, buttoning your collar, grabbing a hammer, shaking a hand. And so the innervation of these muscles is by the median nerve. The median nerve courses through the carpal tunnel, and then after traversing the carpal tunnel, it sends a branch backwards called the recurrent branch of the median nerve, or sometimes simply the recurrent median nerve, which then provides motor innervation of the thenar muscles. The key to it is the recurrent median nerve branch innervates the muscles after traversing the carpal tunnel. And there's also other branches that go to the lumbricals and your digits. Now, the hypothenar muscles are muscles that act on your pinky, and there's three of them. Abductor digiti minimi. Digiti minimi means minimi small digit. Flexor digiti minimi and opponent's digiti minimi. And so, again, I don't care if you can identify these three individual muscles on a picture or the cadaver because it's a group, but it's the actions. We have muscles that will, one of these muscles will abduct the pinky, one will flex the pinky, and one will oppose pinky touching the thumb. Fine movement of that small finger. And so now if we take a look at that ulnar nerve, as it courses into the hand, it traverses this tunnel formed by a connective tissue attaching to the pisiform bone that's called Guillain's canal. And after the ulnar nerve traverses Guillain's canal, it now enters into the hand and gives innervation to the hypothenar muscles, as well as a bunch of other muscles in the hand and some skin. The next group are called the lumbricals. And the lumbricals are four in number. So I'm going to ghost through so we can see a little bit easier. And these four lumbrical muscles arise from the flexor digitorum profundus tendons, all four of them. And then these tendons course up so they arise or they originate on the front of the hand, also called the palmar surface or sometimes volar surface of the hand. And then the tendons course to the back of the digits. So to best see the insertion of these four muscles, let's take a look at a lateral view of the digit, where there's a metacarpal, there's a proximal, middle, and distal phalange. So between the metacarpal and phalange is the MCP, metacarpal phalangeal joint. And then our PIP and DIP, our interphalangeal joints for proximal and distal. Then we've got the same picture, except now we've overlaid muscles and tendons. So in turquoise, there is a lumbrical muscle. It's arising from the FDP tendon. And then notice its attachment is on that dark blue structure called the extensor expansion hood. This extensor expansion hood is, is primarily found on the dorsal surface or posterior surface of the digits. But recognize that part of this hood crosses in front of the MCP joint. That's going to become significant here in a minute. So the pull of the lumbrical, if the lumbrical now contracts, that first dotted arrow represents the vector pull and, and, and see that it is in front of the MCP joint. And because of that, it would cause flexion of the MCP joint. In other words, lumbricals flex the MCP joint. 
But look at that second dotted arrow. It's on the back side of the extensor expansion hood on the back of the IP joints. And as a result, when the lumbricals contract, in addition to flexing the MCP joint, lumbricals extend the IP joints. This is what makes it unique. And recall that the MCP joint extension is primarily from the extensor digitorum communis, and the extension of the IP joints is primarily from the lumbricals. This uh, uh, knowledge of this will be helpful in trying to figure out all those claw hands that you're using to, and you're studying for your boards. Okay, so this is a left hand. This is a light embalmed cadaver, which means uh, the, the tissue doesn't fix because it's not used with formaldehyde, so it can move when you pull on muscles. And this was done by Jordan Barker, uh, a previous student and now an orthopedic resident. So there's our MCP joint. There's the PIP and DIP joints. Outlined in orange is a, a lumbrical, that's the first lumbrical muscle. There's the extensor expansion hood starting and then continuing on the dorsum of the finger. Now I'm going to go into this video and watch now what happens. So there we've got a tendon pulling on that lumbrical. Now watch what happens to the MCP and the IP joint. Flexion and extension. Again, one more time. Flexion of the MCP, extension of the IP joints. There's our lumbricals. Now, uh, the innervation of these lumbrical muscles is unique. Remember how the FDP was funky, the flexor digitorum profundus and its innervation? The exact same thing happens with these lumbricals, where the median nerve, after traversing the carpal tunnel and sending a branch to the recurrent median, will then innervate those first two lumbricals going to your index and square finger. Now, the ulnar nerve courses through Guion's canal and it innervates the hypothenar muscles. It innervates all the other, many of the other intrinsic hand muscles, including the third and fourth lumbrical, or the lumbricals that act on the ring finger and the pinky. And so if you can remember what nerves innervate the two bellies of the FDP, you'll always remember what nerves innervate these two different lumbrical muscles. Next is the adductor pollicis, and, uh, that it has a traverse head and an oblique head, both of which they come basically from that third metacarpal and carpal bones and go to the proximal phalanx of the thumb. And when this muscle contracts, it will do that motion, which is thumb adduction from here to there. Next is our interossei muscles. There's two of them, a dorsal and a palmar interosseous muscles. And so in purple, we have the dorsal interosseous muscle and that dot, uh, dorsal interossei muscles, there's four of them. That dotted line that goes down the square finger shows where what you're using is the midline for what's considered AB and AD duction. When the dorsal interossei muscles contract, they AB duct, they pull the fingers away from the midline in this fashion. You'll notice that I didn't show the pinky abducting when I go from here to here because the pinky has its own abductor on the hypothenar muscles. And so I also put on this page DAB, D-A-B, because the dorsal, D, interossei muscles abduct, A-B, the metacarpal phalangeal joints, DAB. Now the palmar interossei muscles in orange, there's three of them, and these palmar interossei muscles are going to adduct they pull the fingers towards the midline. They adduct the digits. And so you'll notice I put the acronym PAD. P, palmar interosseous muscles, will adduct the digits, hence PAD. And this is often why you'll hear these interossei muscles referred to as the PADs and DABs. And these muscles are innervated by the ulnar nerve.